What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel. And this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, which is reacting to my very first video on this channel. With the quarantine going on right now, one, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy during this time. Secondly, I'm just running out of video ideas. So this is a great time to just kind of take a step back and look back at uh, where we've grown and how we've improved as a poker player. Because looking at this very first video, I know it's going to be so cringy. I I started making videos because I didn't have a clue what I was doing playing poker and this is one of the very first sessions I've ever played. As much as I don't know what I'm doing right now, I really didn't know what I was doing back then and some of the lines I'm going to take are going to be really cringy and tough to watch I think, but we're going to react to it and see what happens. So without further ado, let's get into it. Also crazy that the second vlog I wrote was steps to becoming profitable when really I was nowhere near profitable at that time. What's up guys? Um, well, my name's Ethan. Welcome to my first video. Welcome to my channel um, for poker vlogs and stuff. So hopefully this video is going to be entertaining for you guys. Hopefully you guys like it. Stick around because I'll be posting more videos in the future. But for now, this is my first one. Here's a mess. Whatever. Video uploaded January 7th, 2018, and I'm using an iPhone quality. And this intro is just talking about how I have no idea what I'm doing with poker and an intro to the video. I don't know. We don't need to get into it. Let's skip to the good parts of me butchering every single hand I played. Hand number one starts with, uh, it's actually the first hand I've ever played. First cards I've ever dealt with. It's literally, you sat down, bought the button because I missed the blinds. And um, on the button, four limpers, take a look, you know, four limpers, you know, call in for two dollars because it's a one-two game, it doesn't really matter, right? And look down at my cards and I see pocket aces, you know, nice, Good nice to red start aces with. there. Okay. Great way to start off. I'll raise to 15, which is what I do. Um, I figured, you know, in a one-two game, four limpers, 15 is, is pushing it. You know, I feel like it could have gone bigger, but it went with 15. I get two callers. Flop comes six of hearts. Three clubs and nine diamonds. Uh, six, three, nine, rainbow. Absolutely should brick most um, ranges, but... It There's an example of me not knowing what uh, a range is and how to use it correctly. Um, yeah, bricking most ranges isn't really a thing that makes sense. And the early position actually opens to 50. Also, without really any hesitation, you just throw 50 on there. And then it gets tricky where the middle position actually shoves all in for 110 effectively pretty much um and i'm left with the decision with what do i do first hand sitting down i get pocket aces there's really no there's no flush draw on board there's a random four five open ender for a straight and i figured i have to be ahead in 10 out of 10 cases and also i'm a new player so i figured you know what let's just shove as well there, there you go yeah just a new player aces never gonna fold it i guess thinking i'm ahead 10 out of 10 times just you know normal stuff that that i think this i think this is a fold i should be folding one pair like a a lot of the time now definitely not ahead 10 out of 10 times when you're facing a pot sized bet donk lead then the next player shoves um, I don't think one pair is ever going to be good here. So I figured I would shove just to try to get the uh, initial razor out, out out of the pocket and out of the hand. But now he calls pretty pretty quickly. Then turn comes, jack of spades, and the river is the two of diamonds. And I show first because I'm like pocket aces. Yep, I'm good. Just give me the money. Uh, middle position then shows 6-3 for two pair. Interesting enough. Um, so he shoved... Six three for two pairs. Hopefully, at least I can win like the side pot maybe. And the initial and the uh, the early position guy shows pocket sixes, so I lose that one. I start off the session down two hundred, down a whole stack, down a whole max buying. Who would have thought one pair not good on that board? Shout out to the Twin River action where people play six three. By the way. Also, some things never change. First hand, we sit down, we go ahead and punt a whole buy-in, and we're back reloading. For the second notable hand that I came across in the session comes with me in the small blind. An early position limp, a middle position raises to $8, which is pretty low, pretty standard for a normal raise, I guess. I just have to say, what makes me think that I know what's standard and what's normal in a 1-2 game when this is the fifth session I've ever played in my life? Like, this is just me bullshitting, trying to make it look like I know what I'm talking about, but clearly, uh, obviously don't have a single clue. I don't know what's standard, I don't know what's normal here, because um, clearly this is one of my first times playing. Just just gotta call myself out there at this point. Um, two calls behind him, and actually not to me, and I figured, looking down at pocket deuces... 
I figured I'd raise to $25, you know? I figured, you know, there's four people in the... Did I really just three bet with deuces? What am I... In the small blind? Out of... What am I doing? In the hand right now, trying to knock some people out, get some free money. There's a lot of dead money on the table. So with pocket deuces, <clears throat> I raise 25 and I get two collars. On the flop comes king, seven, four with two spades. So... I'm not looking too great. No, but, you're three bet deuces. Of, of course you're not looking great. Um, so I figured I'd try to bet at least once. I'd at least barrel once, try to get the first person out. So I bet 35. He looks pretty weak. Um, calls, and then the other guy folds. So I did my job. I at least I got one person to fold. I was ideally hoping to take down the pot because my hand looks pretty strong. My, my hand reps a king for sure, but I don't have one. Obviously, I have literally the bottom pair, which doesn't do anything for me. Uh, turn comes Jack of Diamonds. So, helps out his range more than mine, for sure. I'm repping the king. Um, that's pretty much all I'm doing. And I'm first act again, so I bet... I double barrel, and I bet 50. And he thinks for a little bit, which is a good sign. He doesn't, like, snap call or anything. He thinks for maybe, like, 30 seconds or so, tossing the chips in there, and sees what happens. So... That I bet I double barreled for one-third pot? What the hell am I doing? I don't understand. What am I doing in this spot? You idiot. I don't know. I feel like he has me beat for sure. He probably has like a seven or I think a jack too. But <clears throat> as of right now, I'm repping the king. That's all I'm going for. Um, the heads up to the river. River comes to seven of hearts. And now I think, look, I already committed a lot of my stack into this into this pot already. I have a lot of money in there. So I figured let's just triple barrel and see what happens. So I bet 75 into a pot of 246. Um, 75 is, I uh, chose this sizing because I only had maybe 110 behind, and I figured me betting 75 looks a lot stronger, looks like a value bet compared to me just shoving all in. Um, I, f I felt like at the time me shoving looks like a bluff, and then me betting a smaller amount, kind of looking like a value bet in such a pot that's already so big. He thinks for a while, he makes the fold, and I take that one down, luckily. I feel like I played that decently well. Sure, Ethan, sure, you are probably the biggest fish ever. That's why I didn't have a profitable first six months of playing poker, because stuff like that, my goodness, that, that is just horrific, you fish. Hand number three of the session comes with me in the cutoff. Underground straight up just raises to 11, which is fine. Underground plus two, three bets to... Minimum, min, min raise to $25, which isn't that bad. Um, guy, in, guy, two seats to my right, middle position, cold calls. And I look down at ace jack of hearts. And I figured, you know, I would four bet in this situation, but I'll just make the call. Flop comes decent, not bad. Um, nine, queen, three, all of hearts. So I flop the nuts, which is great, great news. All right, so we flop the nuts, and there's no way that I can screw this up, right? But I don't know. From the past history, I feel like there's going to be something along the line that I'm just going to play this horrifically and not get it all in or whatever. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to screw this up somehow. And even better news, under the gun, first act, throws out a bet of 70. <laughs> just throws out 70. I don't know why, but that was, I, I mean, this is the first time I've ever flopped the nuts before. And him throwing 70, I was like, there's no way. Checked my cards again, and I was like, I guess I have it. But do I have I didn't even know if I had the nut flush. Man, I need some help. Yeah, I really needed some help. Appreciate you guys for, I don't even know how the 6,000 of you guys watched this video. Needed a lot of help in this one. That's pretty egregious. But the guy bet 70 bucks into me, and there's no way for me to really screw this up. I feel like I just got to jam all in, and we get it all in on the flop here, and win, I think. I don't even know. The under the gun plus two now shoves all in for about 130. So just about 60 more. Um, I'm thinking like this is like a fairy tale, right? Like I end up making the call. The other guy doesn't have a heart. He like openly says, I don't have a heart. So he just, sh so he just folds. Under the gun plus two shows king eight of hearts. I show ace jack, like I said. I show, we scoop that one. So that was pretty nice to, to see. That was a okay, no way for me to screw that one up. Flopping the nuts versus the second nuts. And we take it down. So, yeah, that's fine. Even a player as bad as me at that time couldn't have possibly messed that one up. 
last hand. Last hand of the session, last hand of this video that I'm going to go over here is me under the gun when I looked down at King Ten of Hearts. So I said, hey, it, this is, I literally planned this out. I was up money and I figured, you know what? Clients are coming to me. I'm just going to leave after this. I've played for four hours or so. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've learned over playing poker and especially early on was trying to declare like this is my last orbit. This is my last hand setting a deadline of when I'm going to stop playing because when that happens, I feel like it shifts my mentality of how to play uh, this specific hand just because, hey, this is my last one. I'm going to wrap up. Um, it looks like I was up in this session, so I wanted to just kind of preserve that win. Um, I'm pretty sure I might have butchered this hand just because I already said that. I've butchered a bunch of hands before because I said, hey, this is my last one. I don't want to lose my entire stack and play a little bit more conservatively and just take a different line than I normally would. If you're going to play one of your last hands a little bit more conservatively or a little bit differently, um, just because it is the last hand, just don't play it at all. It's not worth it if you're not going to be playing your A game. And I have King 10 hearts. Not too bad. I'll limp, put in $2 there, see what happens. Um, I have three other limpers behind me, and action onto the cutoff. He ends up betting around thirty-five dollars, and actions back to me. The blinds fold, and I'm thinking he has to have a premium hand because I think, from all my experiences, someone who raises or bets thirty-five dollars pre-flop into a in a one-two game has either aces, kings, or queens. That's it. Aces, kings, or queens, and I have a king, so I'm blocking the king. So I'm putting him on either aces or queens. Um, next to 33, and I'm up money. I figured I just want to see a flop and see what happens. So I make the call. So I open limp under the gun with a king 10 suited and multiple limpers, and then I call a $35 raise pre-flop. Ah, that's just just not good if ah oh, if this is my last hand then i might as well just fold right and just get on with it i get it they're like pretty but uh, preserve the win and now i'm saying i'm telling myself to be conservative but i feel like this is going to be a disaster so heads up to the flop flop comes nine ten six two hearts i check when the action's on me he bets 55 and into a pot of 84, the percentages don't actually work out at all. I just, I was in the moment, and I figured, let's just gamble. I make the call, and the turn comes the queen of hearts now. So to recap, we're putting our opponent on a super strong hand. We're out of position playing this as well. We flop a king high flush draw on a paired board. And he bets two thirds or three fourths pot. We make the call. We make a bad call pre flop, and then we make another bad call from the flop. Now the turn comes the Queen of Hearts, completing our flush draw, but also and potentially boating him up as well, since we're very confident for some reason that he has aces or queens. Um, that's a really tricky spot there. It's one of those situations where I think he probably has the boat here. And we're going to have to get punished because we made bad decisions pre-flop and on the flop. So once we do improve to our king high flush, I think it's pretty hard for me to get away from this ever. Um, if he does have a boat, if he has aces with the ace of hearts, that's maybe the only hand that we beat since we're so confident. But uh, I'm not loving this situation right now. Might have turned uh, the top set um, with queens. Because that's really, really all you can have, either queens or aces. And action on me, and I figured, you know what, we're just going to gamble. Um, he has a small stack, about like 125 effective. So I figured I'd bet 75. And if he calls, then he has it. If he doesn't, then he doesn't have it, I guess. Because I wouldn't put him on a flush draw because he bet so much on the... He, he bet over half pot on the flop. I bet 75, he's just snap shoves. And all we're screwed. Um, and I I really don't know what to do. I, so I end up making the call. Um, and the river's a brick. He shows pocket queens, like I suspected. And I lose that one. Also, what is wrong with the sizings of the cards? Am I just like that low effort that I couldn't just like the queen? Both of those queens are different sizes. The nines and the six and the queen on the flop and the turn are totally different. I like the very low effort quality here. As much as I make a bunch of editing mistakes uh, in my videos now, this just looks awful. So yes, I deserve to get punished for this hand. Not a fun one, uh, definitely not a great one to end the session on because I think I was up a decent amount then to lose like a $450 hand on the very final hand of the night. 
not a good way to cap things off. I played for about four hours. That's usually how long I usually play. I bought in for 400, left the table with around 674. So I actually booked a win in this session, very surprisingly. These are very few and far between, but I was also playing at Twin River, which is one, fuck Twin River. And two, I mean, the action's pretty great there. So worth, I guess, checking out if you're from around the area. So that wraps up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. It's something new to at least mix things up on the channel, make another video for you guys. If you guys have any ideas what I should post during this time of quarantine, please let me know. I have more online poker videos going on on my second channel. Nothing too significant, just kind of grind out a few cash sessions here and there but besides that thank you guys so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time peace